Ashley is a very um, happy child. She's always um, active, very active in sports and um, other activities. And we found out she had asthma at a routine doctor's appointment when I went checking my son to see if his asthma was, was uh, acting up. And um, the doctor actually heard her wheezing as well. So we determined that she has allergy-induced asthma and cold-induced asthma. Occasionally, if, if, um, if it's bothering her, she has to take her inhaler with her. But it's really only if she's doing a lot of running or um, if she has it bothering her from the seasonal allergies. John's asthma was mainly triggered by activity if he was running around, especially if like during allergy season or had a cold, he would have more trouble breathing. He could be out on a typical sunny day if that wind was blowing and there was pollen out there, he would have a little bit of trouble with it. Other than that, I mean, it, it really, it didn't aggravate him to the point where it was keeping him from doing things. Ariel's was more of a exercise stress related thing. If she get, gets very stressed, she would have more trouble breathing, um, not just in her sport of gymnastics, but even in something where she wasn't doing something physical. If she were stressed or get very upset, she would tend to get very wheezy and often have to use the inhaler. Um, you know, the point where her asthma tended to almost make her more sick to her stomach. Sometime it would get so out of control. She never had to use an nebulizer, although, I mean, it might have been something that we could have tried, not something that ultimately she felt was going to make much of a difference for what her problem was. It wasn't a constant thing where she had to get up every day and use a nebulizer. It was triggered by things like stress or overexerting herself. The doctor tells you they can always grow out of it, so it's something that you hope that one day they will. And, um, you know, you just have to live every day, just keeping an eye on it. He pretty much always had it. Probably not until recent years, and he's in his, he's 23 now, that he really doesn't use it unless, um, if he's getting, if he's sick, has a cold or anything like that, that he seems to get wheezy. I guess it's so common now. I think when they were younger, it's scary. I mean, no, I don't think any mother could ever stand to see her kid in any kind of pain. It's, it's very difficult. It really is because you, you constantly find yourself checking on the kids to see if they're okay. Um, you have to remember to always bring an inhaler with you wherever you go because you never know when something's going to trigger it. We had inhalers in our purses, and our backpacks, everywhere we went all the time. We always had inhalers with us, so, you know, we had what we had. Especially you find yourself at night, asthma has a tendency to flare up more at night than it does during the day, which you would think is the opposite because that's when your body is resting, but it's actually when your lungs are working the hardest. It always scared me because I thought, you know, what, what if what if it happens in the middle of the night? I think that's probably where I had the most issues with it. What if in the middle of the night one of them can't breathe and, and I'm not there? So I tended to do the sleeping one with one eye open and an ear open all the time and always checking on my kids, especially if they were sick with, or if, you know, if John had a bad cold or anything like that, checking on him more that way. Ariel more so if she had a rough day at gymnastics or at school, um, it would it would be something I would just tend to be a more, little lean a little more towards checking on them more, especially at nights when they're sleeping. Because if you're out of my sight, then I can't. Re then I really don't know. And so you find yourself at night going in there constantly to check on the children, you know, to make sure that they're breathing, basically. And um, you know that's the hardest. I think I kept Brandon. I kept a monitor in his room, a baby monitor in his room, until he was three years old. You know, he was well past the baby monitor stage, but I kept it in there just so I could hear him breathing and make sure he was okay. But I think I just always had a good relationship with my kids and I was always around them enough to know what they were doing and how they were feeling.